Hi, this is Synth Chaser with SynthChaser.com. Today I'm going to talk more about the ARP or Solina String Ensembles power supply. I've made a few videos in the past where I repaired string ensembles and they both included a rebuild of the power supply. So in this video I wanted to talk a little bit more about how the String Ensembles power supply works because it's so different from the power supply that you find in most other vintage synthesizers and it requires special attention. There are two types of power supplies, regulated and unregulated. Regulated power supplies have circuits in the form of transistors, op amps, or voltage regulator ICs to keep the output voltage to the device constant. Unregulated power supplies are just that. There's no assurance that the voltage to the load of the keyboard will remain constant, and it can dip under high current draw or as the resistance of the load changes over time. Uh, I'll briefly talk about regulated supplies. There's two types of regulated power supplies. Linear power supplies, which are in most vintage synthesizers, and switching power supplies, like what you'll find in a computer. Switching power supplies regulate power by turning on and off the flow of electricity, which is called current, uh, very quickly. If a lot of current's being drawn by the load, the output voltage will start to drop, and the switching regulator, which is watching the output voltage, will let more current flow on each cycle, always keeping the voltage at what it should be. The advantage of this is they're more efficient than linear supplies and they run cooler because most of the current that gets drawn is used by the load. Uh, the problem with switching supplies is that the switching on and off generates uh, electromagnetic interference which can interfere with other circuitry. These types of supplies aren't found in vintage synthesizers. I've seen people retrofitting them into high power synths like memory modes, poly modes, and profits but I'd really be cautious about doing something like that. Linear supplies regulate voltage by reducing the incoming voltage and dissipating the excess in the form of heat. The load determines the amount of current that's drawn. So if you have 20 volts coming into your linear supply and you regulate it down to 5 volts and you're drawing 1 amp of current, you're dissipating 15 volts at 1 amp as heat, which Ohm's law says is 15 watts. So this is why components in linear supplies are usually on big heat sinks. Uh, the string ensemble is neither of those. It's a mostly unregulated supply. It uses resistors as voltage dividers to drop the incoming voltage down to lower voltages. Um, I'll briefly explain how a voltage divider works. If you have two resistances in series, the voltage drops across the first resistor and you have a smaller voltage across the second resistor. I'm going to show you this with an example and I'm going to put some drawings up. Please forgive my very messy handwriting. Here are two resistors in series, R1 and R2. There's an input voltage applied across the two of them and the output voltage is measured across R2. The formula for a voltage divider is V out equals V in times R2 over R1 plus R2. So for example, if we had a 9 volt input voltage and R1 was 100 ohms and R2 is 200 ohms, the output voltage across R2 would be 6 volts. In the case of the string ensemble, R1 is what we'll refer to as power resistors in the power supply, and R2 is the resistance of the load, which in this case is everything that's connected to that unregulated voltage rail in the synthesizer. So where I mark there with the red arrow, all the current drawn by that voltage rail at the keyboard leaves R1 and goes off to all the other components of the synthesizer. And it's really significant because it means that all the current drawn by the entire key keyboard passes through these power resistors and all the excess power is dissipated in the form of heat through these resistors. In a linear supply there are huge heat sinks to deal with that but not in the string ensemble. In fact the power resistors were really underrated to begin with. Compound the stress of the heat from those resistors uh, with the electrolytic capacitors being dried up after 40 years and it's really bad news for your keyboard. So think of power supply maintenance for a vintage synth like an oil change for your car. Uh, if you want to keep it running and avoid more costly repairs down the road, it's something you just have to do every once in a while. Uh, fortunately, you don't have to do it as often as you, you get an oil change. Uh, Power supply uh, should be good for about 15 to 20 years. That's the, about the shelf life of electrolytic capacitors. So here I have uh, Stevens String Ensemble, and uh, it works just fine now, but Stevens is a smart guy, and he wants to keep this running uh, for a long time. So uh, let's open it up, and let's have a look at where we stand with the power supply. 
So I pulled the guts out of the wooden case, um, and it's a it's big heavy steel frame that folds down different trays that you can get access to the circuit boards. And if you've watched my other videos um, where I've rebuilt uh, string ensemble power supplies, I explain how the power supply is spread across multiple boards, so not all the power rails are generated on the power supply board. And uh, on the back here is the base board, the base voicing board, and there's a power rail that's generated here. And you can see, I will zoom in here, the, this power resistor here uh, has gotten so hot that it scorched the circuit board and the paint has peeled off the resistor. Um, so that, that gives you an idea of the amount of heat that's going through here. And I'll, I'll fold back the board to the main power supply so you can see what that looks like too. So I haven't even folded the board down and you can see uh, through the bottom of the board scorching. Uh, so this has taken so much heat it's blackened the circuit board through the board. I'll come over here to the power supply board, which is over here, and you can see the same thing around these leads here. So this is the master oscillator board, and you can see that the two power resistors here, the uh, paint has totally come off of them and the board is scorched underneath. That's the one that we could see the big blackened area through the board. And then moving over here, uh, these power resistors here, their paint is starting to flake. These get changed with the power supply rebuild as well as some capacitors there. These guys too. Um, and then here's the, uh, the actual power supply board. So you can see the, the uh, scorch mark here on this capacitor coming from the heat of this, this resistor. Um, so all, all, nearly all the components on this board get changed with the power supply rebuild. But we can see just from looking at it that there is a heat problem with, uh, with this keyboard. Um, things are getting way, way too hot. The string ensemble uses about a dozen different voltages throughout the keyboard. Uh, some of which are generated here on the power supply board. Uh, others are generated on other boards like the master oscillator board, the gating board here, the base board on the back. Those are called power rails. The schematic for the string ensemble is drawn up pretty old school, uh, but if I redraw it, I can explain it a little bit better. Here are some of the positive voltage rails from the power supply board that I've redrawn. Power comes in as alternating current from a center tap transformer. On an oscilloscope, it looks like a sine wave going positive and negative about 18.5 volts peak to peak. And that's the little red drawing on the left. It goes through a bridge rectifier, which is the device with four things that look like arrows. Those are bridge diodes. And uh, from the positive terminal of the bridge rectifier comes a rectified voltage, which basically flips the negative going part of the, the wave to positive. And it's bouncing between 0 volts and about 26 volts. And next, this is filtered by the large capacitor, the 4700 microfarad capacitor, which smooths the voltage out to the shape at the right. It's not quite DC voltage, um, it has ripple to it. Off of that 25 volt rail come other resistors. Imagine them as a, the R1 and the voltage divider that I drew earlier, and R2 would be the load of the keyboard attached to that rail. Resistors can increase in value over time or when they're subjected to extreme heat. So if these power resistors change in value, the voltage of the rails will change as well, which can be bad news to the ICs and stuff that depend on those voltages being correct. So let's take a look at how healthy Stevens power supply is now before we service it. So I'm going to turn it on and we're going to measure uh, the voltages just on this power supply board here. So I'm going to put my, uh, my black lead on ground and I'm going to measure the different voltages that come off. So first is the negative 25 volt rail is negative 25.6. The negative 15 volt rail is negative 15.44. Uh, next up is the a negative, uh, sorry, the positive uh, 24, positive 25 volt rail, which is uh, 26 volts, like I said it would be. Um, next, we're going to take a look at the 20 volt rail which is 26.05, but this one, uh, it depends on there being a, um, an expression pedal, which has a lamp in it, so you can't rely on that being 20. That's only used by the, uh, the pedal. Uh, next, we're going to look at the plus 15 volt rail, which is 15.77 volts. The 
plus 21 volt rail is 20.5 volts. The minus uh, 9 is uh, minus 8.59 and the minus 8 is minus 7.98. So uh, things are fairly close to, to being in spec. So while I was taking those measurements with uh, a uh, multimeter measuring DC voltage, I want to show you that there's some AC uh, component to that as well, uh, ripple. So uh, what I've done is I'm, I'm, I'm going to measure with the oscilloscope the 25 volt rail. And uh, you can see here um, that you can see a little pulsating to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get over there and change the oscilloscope to AC coupling so we can see exactly um, what, what, how, how big that ripple is. It's hard, kind of hard to see when you're on 10 volts per division. So I've changed the oscilloscope to, uh, to AC coupling. So now we'll be able to see, uh, see the ripple visually here. So uh, it looks like the, uh, the ripple is uh, two, sorry, 400 millivolts peak to peak. Um, that's uh, as the capacitor uh, charges and discharges, the voltage fluctuates. This would be completely flat if it were a regulated power supply. Now I'm going to install my Synth Chaser power supply rebuild kit, which uh, replaces the power supply components, not just on this board, but the other board, with higher rated components. So uh, higher rated capacitors, higher rated bridge rectifier, and then uh, replaces all the power resistors with higher wattage resistors that are going to withstand that heat a lot better. And uh, they shouldn't look like the ones that, that we see here. So I'm going to save the old resistors, the old power resistors that come off, and we can measure them and see if their values changed um, over time with, uh, with abuse. I mean, the, the power rails are fairly close to what they, sh what they, they should be. Um, so, I mean, nothing has catastrophically failed. But let's check the resistors anyway and see if they change value over time. An idea of the amount of stuff that needs to be replaced on the power supply board here it is with the uh, old components removed. There's barely anything left. Everything on there is underrated or dried up and needs to be replaced. So I've got the uh, power supply rebuilt. So this board, components on this board, components on the master oscillator board here, components on the gate board and on the uh, baseboard on the back. And here's the pile of old parts that came out, the charred uh, capacitor, old bridge rectifier, other capacitors, uh, weather-torn resistors. And I, I went through as I took them out and I checked each of them for, uh, for resistance. And they, all except for one uh, was pretty close to its original value. The one that had, uh, had drifted from its original value was this one. This is where we saw a lot of heat, so much heat that it, it scorched through the bottom of the power supply board. This 150 ohm resistor uh, was measuring um, 236 ohms. So it, it, it uh, fairly significantly uh, drifted from its original value. So now we're going to fire this up and we're going to see what the result is uh, for the voltages on the power supply board. So I'm going to power the, uh, the keyboard up and uh, I'm going to take the same voltage readings that I took in the beginning. Uh, I'm going to take them again now that we've rebuilt the power supply. So the minus 25 volt rail is minus 25.82 volts. The minus 15 volt rail is minus 15.61 volts. Uh, the plus 25 volt rail is 26.20 volts. Um, the plus 15 volt rail is 15.88. Plus 21 volt rail is uh, 20.61. The minus 9 is minus 8.64, and the minus 8 minus 8 is where's the minus 8? Minus 8.04. So it looks like everything is still still good. Uh, but we kind of caught this before um, that failing resistor really started to make things uh, uh, 
stray in voltage value from what, what they should be. Hopefully you found this explanation of how the string ensemble power supply works informative or entertaining uh, or useful. Um, I have the power supply rebuild kits for sale on my website, synthchaser.com. Um, I can also uh, provide installation services for it. But uh, I'll get off my soapbox now. I think uh, three videos with uh, string ensemble stressing the power supply rebuild. Uh, uh, hopefully this video shows uh, why it really is important to do. Um, if you have any questions, please post in the comments um, or uh, drop me a line through my website, synthchaser.com. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.